Hi. Well, here we are, and it's Monday. Believe it or not, it's the 19th of April. It's the 19th of April, and it's Monday. And here we are in Psalm 106. And uh, this is the message translation that we're in today. This is a long psalm. It's good to have you here. And we're going to get reading here because of time and school talk in session. So, hallelujah. Thank God. And why? Because he's good because his love lasts. But who on earth can do it? Disclaim God's mighty acts, broadcast all his praises. You're one happy man when you do what's right. And you're one happy woman when you form the habit of justice. Remember me, God, when you enjoy your people. Include me when you save them. I want to see your chosen succeed and celebrate with your celebrating nation. Join the hallelujahs of your pride and joy. <clears throat> We've sinned a lot, both we and our parents. We've fallen short, hurt a lot of people. After our parents left Egypt, they took your wonders for granted, forgot your great and wonderful love. They were barely beyond the Red Sea when they defied the high God, the very place he saved them, the place he revealed his amazing power. He rebuked the Red Sea so that it dried up on the spot. He paraded them right through, and no one so much as got wet feet. He saved them from a life of oppression. <clears throat> he pried them loose from the grip of the enemy, and when the waters flowed back on their oppressors, there wasn't a single survivor. Then they believed his words were true and broke out in songs of praise. But it wasn't long before they forgot the whole thing and wouldn't want to be told what to do. They only cared about pleasing themselves, um, provoking God with their insistent demands. He gave them exactly what they asked for. But um, along with it, they got an empty heart. One day in camp, some grew jealous of Moses and of Aaron, holy priests of God. And the ground opened up and swallowed Dathan. Then buried Abram's gang, first flared against that rebel crew and touched them to a cinder, or sorry, torched them to a cinder. They cast in metal a bull calf at Horeb and worshipped the statue that they had made. They called, they traded the glory for a cheap piece of sculpture, a grass chewing bull. They forgot God, their very own savior, who turned things around in Egypt, who created a world of wonders in Africa and who gave that stunning performance at the Red Sea. Fed up, God decided to get rid of them and except for Moses, his, uh, his chosen, he would have. And except for Moses, his chosen, he would have. All right, so um, I'm going to stop at this point. Um, well, I'm going to read a teeny bit more about Moses, but Moses stood in the gap and deflected God's anger, prevented it from destroying them utterly, and they went on to reject the blessed land. They didn't believe a word of what God promised. They found fault with the life they had and turned a deaf ear to God's voice. Exasperated, God swore that he'd lay them low in the desert scattering their children hither and yon and strewing them all over the strewing them all over the earth. Um, good morning, everyone. My computer again is not showing me who's on, so I've had to turn on my phone and see I can greet you, Gail. Hello. Um, I'm not sure who else is on here, but we are 
going to just pray and read through this portion and um, it's a much longer psalm so we're going to stop here but i just wanted to call attention to moses and what moses did i want to reread that for just a moment and talk about that for a second um, it says fed up god decided to get rid of them and except for moses his chosen he would have you know that there was only one man that God spared the Israelites for, and that was Moses, and he interceded for them. It says here that he stood in the gap and deflected God's anger. He stood in the gap and deflected God's anger, preventing it from destroying them utterly. They went on to reject the blessed land and didn't believe a word of what God promised. So today I just want to talk about just these couple of things that are listed here, and I want to repent <clears throat> on behalf of my myself, my household, my city, my nation. Um, and I want to ask God for mercy like Moses did again. And I want us to recognize um, that we can be like Moses. We can be the one that deflects God's anger and cries out for mercy. And indeed, that is what we are doing right now at this point in history. Um, so I just want to go into prayer here right now and say thank you, Lord, for this day. And thank you for your word. I thank you that the word was sent to the earth in the body of Jesus Christ. And that he is the living word. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And it is he alone that we worship. And when we think about how that must have broken your heart to see your people turn from worshiping you, the creator, to a statue of um, a bull, a grass-eating bull, a cow, um, just, you know, a farm animal. You were reduced to a farm animal in their eyes. Uh, that they could see with gold um, and i just i want to say lord that in every way that we are reducing you to one of your creations and minimizing the holiness and the splendor and the awe of who you really are in any way that we are worshiping a golden calf in this time in history um, in our own lives in our families, in our bloodlines, in our city, state, or country, Lord, in this world, any way that we have minimized who you are and what you're deserving of, the praise and the honor and the worship and the just um, bowing before you, Lord, we repent and we ask you for mercy. We recognize our sins. We recognize that if we were going along with the Israelites there in this time and day and had not been like Moses, having seen your wonders and interacting with you on the mountaintop. Perhaps we would have danced and drank and, and um, committed awful sexual sins in your sight. And Lord, we just say we're sorry. We're sorry for what they did back then. And we're sorry, Lord, for what is going on right now. We ask for your mercy. Lord, your word says right here um, that they reject, rejected the blessed land. And so, Lord, we repent of rejecting your blessings and rejecting the land that you have given us, the promised land. And most of all, Lord, they sa it says that they didn't believe a word of what you had promised. And so we, we respond to this, and in our own hearts we say, search us. And in any way that we are not accepting, but we are rejecting or disbelieving your word of promise, we pray that you forgive us and keep us in a place of faith. That has been my prayer for weeks. Keep me out of unbelief and in a place of faith. And Lord, I ask that for my brothers and sisters. I ask that for my family, our city, our nation, our state. Lord, this country, 
Lord, we ask that we would have the ability to believe your promises. And we cry out for your mercy, Lord. It's a choice. And we pray, Lord, that we would believe you. And Lord, your word also says here that they found fault with the life that they had. And so that means that they became grumblers and complainers. And so, Lord, again, we repent for grumbling and complaining about the life that we have or have been living. And we ask for you to give us the ability to be thankful today. I thank you for everything, Lord, that you have done for our family and are doing for our nation, even though it seems very difficult. We thank you that we are not completely destroyed. We thank you that there are lives spared. We thank you that there are men and women who love and worship and only bow down to you. We thank you, God, that you have had mercy on us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that people are being healed and set free, delivered and saved every day. We choose today to be thankful. We choose not to be grumblers or complainers. And Lord, it says here in your word that they turned a deaf ear to your voice. And so, Lord, we ask that you'd open our ears. We repent again for in any way we have been deaf eared to your voice. In any way that you've been knocking and pursuing us and wanting to, um, yeah, just communicate with us, Lord, we ask, Father, that we would be able to hear you. We ask, Lord, that our hearts, our minds, our ears would be attuned to you. And again, Lord, we ask for grateful hearts that we would not find fault, complain, murmur, that that would not be in our mouths. We pray, Jesus, that you would go with us today into this day, giving us a bright outlook, a cheerful heart, a grateful heart, and that most of all, we would continue to be thankful for your mercy. We call down mercy on ourselves, on our families, the mercy of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord over our cities, our state, and our nation, Lord. We call down the mercy of the Lord. And we say that without you, we would surely perish. And as Moses was, so do we choose this morning to stand in the gap and deflect your anger and to say, God, that there are still a remnant here, those who believe believe in you and believe in your word and believe in your promise and know that you are true. And so we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. I pray that you have a wonderful day. Um, happy birthday to Caitlin. And um, thank you, Linda, for coming on and just popping on with us. We're so glad that you're feeling better. And we'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Lord willing. Bye-bye.